In this video, I'm going to go over a few studies that could address the question of whether wearing a mask will protect you from getting the COVID-19 infection. This topic is not all that straightforward, so let me go through the studies that I found, and then at the end of the video, I'll give you my three takeaways on this subject. First of all, let's distinguish between the two common types of masks. There's the so-called surgical mask, the one that you see people wearing all the time in the news, and then there's the more complex masks. Now, to be correct, these other ones are called respirators. They're not called masks. The most common respirator out there is called the N95 respirator. And then why is it called the N95? Well, because it filters out 95% of particles that are 0.3 microns or larger in diameter. And in Europe, the same thing is called an FFP2 mask. Now, take a look at this first study from the American Journal of Infection Control, which is a lab-based study, not a people-based study, that examined both masks and respirators. In this study, air that was contaminated with harmless virons, or virus particles, flowed through the mask, and the number of virons that came through the other end was measured. Now, these graphs over here indicate the performance of the two different models of N95 respirators that were studied. For the N95 model on the left, 95% of virons were blocked, whereas the one on the right blocked about 94% of particles. In other words, it worked about as expected. Now, for surgical masks, the results were pretty wide-ranging. The graph on the left shows that the mask allowing for more than 80% of virons to pass through, which doesn't really seem all that useful to me at all, whereas the other mask that they used on the right led in about 20% of virons. So it appears that there was a surprising amount of difference between the surgical masks, even though they were made by the same company. Now, the obvious conclusion of the study is that the N95 respirators are consistently superior at blocking virons, and that the surgical masks don't do a particularly good job. What's not clear, however, is the clinical significance of that leakage, by which I mean that if the N95 respirators are letting in 5% of viral particles, does that make them useless? And what about masks? One of them blocked 80% of virons, but let 20% in. What does that mean in terms of protection? Is it effective or is it not effective? Let's look at another study. Here's a 2019 randomized control trial from the Journal of the American Medical Association that compared N95 respirators with surgical masks in a different kind of way. The study followed healthcare providers who were routinely exposed to patients with flu-like or cold-like symptoms, and it ran over four influenza seasons, so that's four years, and it found no significant difference between the effectiveness of N95 respirators and medical masks in preventing laboratory-confirmed influenza. Now, just to be clear, in this study, everyone did wear something, either a mask or a respirator, and no difference was then found between the two. Both groups of healthcare providers got infected with influenza at the same rate. Now, this study, I think, at least answers one important question for us, which is that N95 respirators are not much better than simple surgical masks at preventing infection, even though they filter out more virons. Then there is this systemic review and meta-analysis published in the Journal of Clinical Infectious Disease that was published a few years ago. It specifically tried to answer the question of whether or not masks or respirators would protect healthcare providers from contracting respiratory viruses when taking care of patients with the disease. These investigators did not reach a firm conclusion on that question. There were some cohort studies that did show benefit, and then there were others that did not show benefit. The authors of the meta-analysis concluded that, overall, the evidence to inform policies on mask use in healthcare workers is poor, with a small number of studies that is prone to reporting biases and lack of statistical power. Now, let me translate that for you. It means that the question hasn't been studied that much, and we don't have that much data on the subject to make really firm conclusions. So that's what that means. But let me give you my take on this, because I'm sure that you're watching this video to get some answers and not to be even more confused. The first point that I'd like to make here is that the question is actually very difficult to study. You are not going to find a great trial that really gives us a good answer here. These studies all looked at healthcare providers who took care of patients with respiratory viruses, but those workers were also members of the community. So if they didn't catch the virus at work, they might well have caught it after they left work and went back out into the community. How do you ever solve for that kind of a confounding factor? Furthermore, a lot of healthcare providers also wear disposable gloves when handling patients with respiratory symptoms. I know that I do. And when I'm done taking care of a patient with respiratory symptoms, I promptly throw the mask and the glove away before I see the next patient. No study looked at using multiple fresh masks or gloves throughout the day, which is an important omission. 
The long and short of it is that the question on whether wearing a mask or not will help hasn't been studied in a way that arrives at a clear conclusion. But since we did not find a strong signal in the data indicating that a difference was there to be found, to me, that means that either there wasn't a difference at all, or that that difference, if there was one, was minor, so that it was very difficult to detect. So here are my three takeaways regarding the use of masks. Number one. N95 respirators don't really seem to perform better than simple surgical masks. And besides, N95s, in case you've never used one before, are uncomfortable and very stuffy, at least if you're wearing them correctly. So the chances are you won't be able to wear them for longer than a few hours anyway, so if you are going to get a mask, stick to the simple surgical mask. Number two, don't let the mask give you a false sense of security. Don't wear that mask and think that you now have substantial protection. If masks give you any kind of protection, it's minor at best. Number three, your best bet in an area with a COVID-19 outbreak is still social distancing. You can wear a mask all day long, but if you're going to public places when you don't need to be going, you are far more likely to get infected. Mask or no mask.